My name's Phil Taggart. Welcome to Belfast, a city with a musical story that we're about to celebrate. From the likes of Van Morrison to new champions like Bicep, we've got plenty to talk about. Belfast is a seaport in the north of Ireland that's been shaped by grit, conflict and so much creative energy. The city has given us great songwriters, it's given us remarkable characters and it's got venues that you'll want to spend all your time at. Music is helping to define the new Belfast and happily there's a place that's bringing the story to life. Though yeah, Music Centre has been based in Belfast Cathedral Quarter since 2007. It started life as a whiskey warehouse and then became the home for Outlet Records in the 1980s. That energy has been sustained by the OEM oh yeah Music Centre, a place to nurture new music and creatives. In a little minute, we're going to be going on the Belfast City bus tour, but before that, we're looking into the history of Northern Irish music here at the exhibition in the OEM. Oh yeah. There's so much to see here. In 2009, Oh Yeah launched the first version of the Belfast Music Exhibition and it continues to grow as new items are added. Learn about Henry McCulloch, the only Irish man to play Woodstock Festival, or Fergal Sharkey, mainstay of the undertones. Also, Paul Brady, Bill Coulter, Jimmy Kennedy, the writer of the Hokey Cokey and Red Sails in the Sunset. Stunning artifacts, many of them on loan from the artists or their estates. Vivian Campbell's Gibson that saw action with Def Leppard, a multi-platinum award issued to Snow Patrol for sales of the Eyes Open album. There's a beautiful Def Jam jacket that was gifted to Noel by Ad-Rock from the Beastie Boys. One of the jewels in the crown of the exhibition is the Gary Moore cabinet, and I chatted to Paul Kane from the OES Centre to find out a little bit more. So Paul, tell me a little bit about the, the Gary Moore exhibition here. This is something really special for us. Uh, when Gary passed away, he was only 57, um, and his dad wanted to celebrate his 60th birthday, but also we were going to induct him into the Legend Award, and we received this on long-term loan. And it's something really special. The guitar itself, Gibson Les Paul, it is incredible. The sound you know, uh, that Gary got out of that was unbelievable. But the guitar itself is really special because it's actually hollowed out uh, inside, and it was originally built for Jim Core. Uh, he wanted something just a wee bit lighter because the guitar is solid mahogany if you played a Les Paul before and it gives that extra resonance and extra feedback for Gary's work like thicker like Parisian walkways. But moving on to then the, the suit itself, uh, barbed wire suit, you know this was made for uh, basically Amnesty International, uh, the gig he did for them and there's a we sort of wee reference to you know looking back to Belfast with barbed wire but there's hope there. But the exhibition itself has been a real beacon for guitar players, for fans around the world. Um, the two most prominent guitar players that I've had uh, in here and, and had a chat with was Vivian Campbell, of course, who was also in Thin Lizzy for a wee while and, and done his thing. But also Eric Bell, uh, who came in uh, quite somber, was very emotional about seeing the guitar and just said, I wanted to pay my respects. Uh, and this has been something really special. And it's really been the jewel in the crown of our exhibition ever since. Belfast punk was one of the most intense forms of the genre, railing against sectarianism and the horrors of the conflict. Within the exhibit, there is the Elvis shop sign for good vibes that featured in the film. Original leather jackets from the outcasts, the defects and stiff little fingers plus vintage posters, t-shirts, badges and fanzines. An original pressing of Teenage Kicks signed by all the original members of the undertones who were represented by Terry Hooley his record label Good Vibrations which inspired a film of the same name. I got the opportunity to chat to Terry about the history of the Belfast punk scene. Terry, tell us a bit why we're, why we're here. We're here because uh, <laughs> Wizard Studios where we recorded a lot of Good Vibrations stuff was down there. It was owned by a guy called Davy Smith. We recorded there and Rudy, Victim, Protex, The Undertones, The Outcasts, Krilla de Ville, The Bank Robbers, The Roof Wrecks. If you think of all the bands that we got signed up, it was amazing. And we recorded Teenage Kicks here for £200. 
So we're outside the, the Hart Bar. Tell me a little bit about your history with this place. Well, the Hart Bar is a very strange bar. But then when you went upstairs, it was just magic. So it was with all these kids, Pogo, and the bands like Rudy and the Outcasts. We were two, two favourite bands in, in the Hart Bar. It didn't matter whether you're Catholic, Protestant, didn't matter whether your hair was pink. It didn't matter if you came from Mars, just as long as you were a punk, that was it. And uh, it was just great. And it really was the premier punk club in Belfast. Like the exhibition, the Belfast Music Bus Tour has been operational for over 10 years, a rolling narrative that covers all parts of the city. It reveals the places where music history has been made and remembers the characters, the songs and the momentous events. Ulster Hall is a legendary place, a rite of passage for every music kid, and a trove of great stories. We caught up with Paul again to find out more about the history of this iconic venue. Right, so Paul, tell me a little bit about the Ulster Hall. Well, Ulster Hall opened its doors in 1862. Revolutionary in many different ways, but in the 70s, two great stories really resonated. First of all, there was four young guys from England who started this heavy rock band called Led Zeppelin. They came here on the 5th of March, 1971. And let's not forget that Belfast was a dark, dreary and dangerous place. We're two years into the Troubles, but they wanted to see their fans and they brought with them three brand new songs and one very special guitar. The three songs were Black Dog, Rock and Roll and Starway to Heaven. Which are three of their biggest songs probably today. Totally, so in here was the first place they've ever been played. Six years later, things were turned on their head. We actually had punk was a new kid in town. This street in Bedford Street was hiving with Protestant punks and Catholic punks, all wanting to see their legends, which were the clash at that stage. But about two hours before the gig started, a sign comes out in the door to say the gig's been canceled. What do these punks do? Well, they came together in a great community spirit and they wrecked the place. <laughs> so there was a couple of guys in the audience who were disillusioned but they were also inspired, and they went away to form a brand new band called Stuff Little Fingers. They went on then to write a brand new teenage national anthem, which was Alternative Ulster. On the corner of Donegal Street lies the old Northern Bank building, a building unbeknownst to most, which is steeped in musical heritage. I spoke with local harpist Ursula Burns, who had the opportunity to perform here herself. Tell me a little bit about this building and the harp festival. Well, it's now the disused Northern Bank, a really beautiful venue. Before it was the Northern Bank, it was the assembly rooms. And in 1792, they had a really epic festival here, which was they put a call out for all the harpers in Ireland to assemble at the assembly rooms and compete for cash prizes. And 10 harpers turned up. The art form was kind of dwindling at that point. 10 harpers turned up. I find it remarkable, five of them were blind because it was mostly a blind pro person's profession. Mm. And Edward Bunting, yeah. he was 19 at the time and he was commissioned to notate the tunes in order to preserve the, the culture because um, it, before, pre those days it had been mostly oral tradition. Um, so he was, he was commissioned with the task of writing it down. Broken vessel, I draw you close to me. The next stop on the tour takes us all the way back to the 1950s when local singer Ruby Murray took the music world by storm. So much so that Frank Sinatra was quoted saying, You're a hell of a great singer and I'm your greatest fan. I caught up with Peter Wilson, aka Duke Special, to discover more about the local pop star legend. Peter, tell me a little bit about where we are and the importance of her. Well, we're, we're standing um, in and among the streets where Ruby would have grown up. Uh, I think both the houses that she grew up in are, are no longer around. Uh, but she grew up in this, this part of the, the city. From a very young age, she would have been set up on the table to, to sing in, in front of friends and family. Um, her father was very um, enthusiastic about her abilities and uh, she had a, a, from a very young age, a very kind of soft, 
um, uh, voice and, and she was very shy but, but she loved singing and she was really the first kind of pop star to come from Belfast and the first big TV star. In 1955 she had five songs in the UK Top 20 in the same week which was only equaled when Michael Jackson died and then all the, the downloads and streaming equaled that. You know at her height she was selling like over half a million records per month wow. and, and we're talking like at initially like the hard heavy 78s mm. so just phenomenal kind of success um, for a wee girl from here next we're headed towards the black mountain and the musical community of west belfast this is the home of the adventures their song broken land was a massive radio hit in 1988 later two brothers left their mark on the city Brian Kennedy toured with Van Morrison and released his own music. And the late Bab Kennedy sang with the band Energy Orchard and worked with American stars such as Steve Earle and Nancy Griffith. West Belfast is also a rich heartland for traditional music. So we're stopping at a very important venue to talk to the artist Una Monaghan. Sean Wood's Thievan Weed in Culterland in near her Belfast, Cree Lar and Seal Gaelic, August and Kjall tradition to Sakar. I'm going to go to the next one. It's a session call of Ace and Shaw. It's a big one. It's a shop call. It's a lure. It's a line. It's a Danlan. It's a Arkland. It's a Dyra. It's a big call tradition. It's a big one. It's a big West Belfast has such a brilliant tradition of community organising, um, both in music and, and in other areas as well. So this place was founded and funded really by the community. When you mention West Belfast, who are the artists and musicians that come to mind? From my experience, um, there was a lot of traditional musicians around here, um, the McSherrys, the McPeaks. I grew up playing music as well with the Gormans, um, Patrick Davy, brilliant flute player up the road. And if you go further back, um, people like Sean Maguire and Sean McAloon would have made their home here, coming in from the country and would have played. And throughout the Troubles as well, there were brilliant sessions along this road in the Rossa Club as well. So it's just got a great history of, of music. So tell me a little bit about the Fail and Fubble. Fail and Fubble is a community festival. It started up um, during the Troubles, whenever this area was, it was going through a really difficult time. And to provide, I guess, hope and the arts and access and, and things for people to do creatively in the area. It was such a, a brilliant initiative at the time. And then since that, it's just gone from strength to strength. And it attracts really much bigger names now than it started out with. Um, but still has that ethos of community organisation and, and involvement really from the people. Should have seen the signs, they change your mind, you could have gave me a warning. Whilst on the Newton Arch Road in East Belfast, it's hard to miss the luminaries and legends of the East Side mural on the East Side Arts Building. The piece pays tribute to the incredible creative talent East Belfast has produced over the years. I spoke to music writer and broadcaster Stuart Bailey to find out more. So Stu, we're here at Eastside Arts. Tell us a wee bit about the mural to kick us off. Well, this mural kind of celebrates some of the creative talent uh, which has come out of this part of town or lives in this part of town. So George Best obviously is the, the major icon, uh, working class boy from the Craig Estate. But also you've got Van Morrison who's looming up there uh, and he's from Hindford Street, just around the corner from here. You've also got two fantastic guitar players uh, both of who featured in uh, Thin Lizzy at one stage. Uh, you've got Gary Moore on your left and uh, Eric Bell, who's also on the wall, was one of the founding members of Thin Lizzy. So he played in the early days. Songs like Whiskey in the Jar and The Rocker is Eric Bell from the Woodstock Road in East Belfast. You know, this is a, a working class part of town. It's the shipyards, it's the linen mills, it's the engineering works. And all the houses are very densely packed and it's a bit rough and a bit ready. And I think that sound is reflected in the, 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 the likes of Van Morrison. You are in a better place now. And when the sun is up and low, get there. Looking down on me. Looking down on me now. Described as Belfast's own Penny Lane, Cypress Avenue is a beautiful tree-lined Victorian boulevard and the subject of a classic Van Morrison track on his 1968 album Astral Weeks. It's also the location Van Morrison chose to perform two live shows in 2015. We caught up with the singer Dana Masters who performed with Van Morrison during these shows to discover more. But I never would have guessed it was 
So Dana, tell us a little bit about Cypress Avenue. Yeah, well, do you know, obviously not being from here, I didn't know much about Cypress Avenue until I started to um, work with Van and do backing vocals for him and it would pop up in these songs he was doing. And then one day we did uh, his birthday gig here and it was incredible, this sense of someone being home and people being really proud of him. And you've got a sense of what this place means, not only for people here locally, but what Cypress Avenue means globally to people. Do you know what I mean? It was, in, it was incredible. So how does this place resonate as a, as a musical landmark to you specifically? I feel like because I, I sort of started working with Van six or seven years ago and I was still getting to know Northern Ireland at that stage. Do you know what I mean? And so to be able to tour with the musician and be in close proximity to, to the music that was born in places like this, but also that talk about places like this, but at the same time to be walking down these streets and to be experiencing those places that a lot of people in the world will never experience, but they know about it. There's a, there's, there's a sense of magic there. There's a sense of authenticity then when you go back and you listen to those songs and know that that songwriter has done such a good job of capturing the essence of that place and not just the place but the people of that place and i think too for people on cypress avenue and in other places that are mentioned in some of van's music there's a pride that they carry that here in this this tiny country it has been immortalized and they have been immortalized in a way that the rest of the world are looking at them with this sort of like nostalgia and value and awe um, that i think feels really good and there's a pride in that and I think that's that's right because these places are special and these people are special and I think they do deserve to be known and mentioned and you know sung about and written about and immortalized in that way you know These have been a few of the iconic music locations throughout Belfast and of course there's plenty more stories to be told on the OEA bus tour, you will also visit sites such as Thank you for taking the time to follow the Belfast music story. Hopefully sometime you can join us in the OEA exhibition space or on the music tour bus. And remember to follow the OEA Music Centre on socials to keep up to date with all of the very exciting things that are happening throughout the year as Belfast stakes its claim as one of the great music centres.